We also have the announcement that the Elite have all re-signed with AEW, Kenny Omega, Nick and Matt Jackson, Adam Page. All have signed multi-year deals. And uh, they all gave some quotes, as did Tony Khan. And essentially, particularly in the case of the Young Bucks and Adam Page, I mean, just talking about the schedule. They've got kids. All, 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 the, 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 schedule, the schedule is the key thing for, for all of them, really. Yeah. Yeah, they got kids at home, young kids, and... You know, they can they can work there one day a week, spend a lot of time with their families, and make a lot of money. And uh, that was enough to get all of them to re-sign. So, not going anywhere. No, I'm not going anywhere. The um, And obviously, the the, the thing is that, that also is, uh, you know, for people who think that there's like, uh, I mean, and I, you know, whatever, that, that there's like Tony Khan is... Um, whatever you know like losing any interest or any or or cutting back like one of the things um like uh, like you would you would not be seeing i mean like again to get them to sign this early because because they were obviously you know they were they were willing to play both sides against each other i mean that's that was the deal so he had to put up a great offer to get this thing signed now they actually made the deal I don't I would I would guess it was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know the date, but I do know the deal was already made. Um and he told them to keep quiet on it because he wanted to announce it on August 2nd in conjunction with the 200th episode of Dynamite. And it's actually it was a lot of news today. Um you know, all over the world really. I mean, uh just uh regarding you know, AEW, there was a Sportico article, there was uh Tony Khan Responding to Paul Levesque's claim, you know, a thing on the uh, Cody Rhodes special. There was um, the Sports Illustrated article, you know, with uh, the the announcement of the signing. And um, I mean, one thing as far as the signing goes is is that the four guys had made a pact that they were going to stick together, uh, whether it would be in WWE or AEW, um, and. They basically had made an agreement that it was going to be majority rules, and um, it had gone back and forth. But essentially, th- you know, whatever it was, I don't know if it's three of the four or four of the four um, made the deal. Um, but they all had agreed that they were going to go together as a group, either to WWE or go as a gr- or stay as a group. So it was not going to be a split up. Um, and uh you know i mean that was the thing and um views changed you know people who think that it was like oh they were never going to go or anything like that um there were discussions there were votes that changed there were things that happened um since this pact was made and i think the pact was made some time back and but they are going to be in and in the case of um you know it's 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 a multi-year deal um i think four have you heard that four I heard the rumor of four, but I don't have that confirmed or anything. Yeah, I don't have it confirmed either. Um, and it's supposed to be a secret, whatever the number is. I do know that, you know, as far as the length of the of the, of the stay. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, obvi- obviously the numbers financially were very high because if they weren't very high, they wouldn't have signed at this point because they had until the end of the year to negotiate um and so obviously AEW and tony wanted them signed now um and made it worth their while uh financially to sign now which the point of all this is and then he did the same thing with roosh is that he is not shying away from spending money whatsoever you know it's not like that there's thoughts of um cutting back or anything like that you know, as far as like, are there guys who may not get signed when their deals are up? Yes, of course that's possible, and so and, and there have been guys like that, but they're guys that aren't being used. As far as the key guys in the company, um, to me, this is a sign that that they're you know, they're willing to bid again, equal to because if WWF if if, if these guys thought that WWE was going to make a offer substantially better. You know, it, it would be, you know, I mean, there there would be, they, they would listen. You know, I mean, they were, you know, I mean, I, I, they, the WWE could not legally make an offer to any of them because they're still under contract. They couldn't make, they couldn't make that offer for many months. 
but um, you know, WWE did have interest in all of them, and um, you know, especially Omega. You know, I mean, they had a great interest in Omega in particular, and uh, but it, this is how it went down. So um, they're going to be they're going to be around, and uh, they're going to be on the uh, London show and all the shows going forward. Well, on the topic of London, it was on that uh, documentary where Triple H said, I did not grow up dreaming of being the champion in the face of a secondary promotion. Well, he and said that about resulted, Cody. Yes, and Tony Khan. Well, he was saying that about himself. He was he was saying that uh, one of the... Rhodes took a chance returning to WWE because he didn't think he'd be able to live out his dream in a secondary promotion. And uh, Tony said, we certainly will not be a secondary promotion at All In. We're number one in the UK on TV and with a record gate. A lot of respect for Cody. I know those weren't his words, to be fair. But we're not secondary in a ton of markets. For the first time in a long time, WWE has been secondary in a lot of markets. I'm proud of where we're at, and we're not taking a back seat to anybody. I mean, that would have been cool about a year ago. But what, what market is, is AW lead, winning in? Well, he says number one in the U.K. Mentions that one. Well, I mean, they they got a great show in the U.K., but uh, there's a lot more interest in WWE in the U.K. than AEW, even though this show is going to do the all-time record business. And because they do have more viewers on television because they are on a stronger or on a platform that more people have access to. But, I mean, they're not, they're not going to, in the long term, they're not going to be doing the business WWE does, you know, consistently over and over and over again. I mean, if you look at just like any kind of like Google Trends or things like that, um, or just on the street or merchandise or whatever, WWE's got way more, you know, because they've been there longer. They have, um, and also because they're hot now. I mean, if they were cold now, it wouldn't be the same thing. But um, WWE is way more interested in the UK. But um, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be the record. Uh, it is. Well, I mean, it's, it's by far the record gate for, for Europe or anywhere in the world except for a couple of WrestleManias and only um, right now, right now I think there are nine WrestleMania shows ahead of them gate-wise and there's one or two that they may pass um, depending on how many more tickets they sell in the last m couple of weeks. So I guess we're 25 days out. Um, the all-time attendance record uh, for the UK, they have not quite reached but I'm pretty confident, which is the Wembley 1992 show. They they are, uh, what are they? They're about uh, uh, 11, no, 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 no. They're, they're about uh, 1,300 shy. So that could be broken in a week or two. Um, but it will be broken. They will have the all-time European attendance record. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, it is likely that they'll have the all-time attendance record other than the two South Korea shows. All right, uh, Saturday, we got a million things going on, including the... Well, we got more, 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 more. So, so there was a Sportico article, and, you know, it was just talking about the, uh, the um, you know, just the, the various business and everything like that. But one thing that they mentioned was that... Um, they said that that the um, and they're, they're they're basically a sports business website, and they said that the uh, value if AEW is put on the open market was one billion dollars right now, which is a very interesting number because um, I don't know I don't know how many people uh, you know as far as you know there's a lot of people that that have been very critical of AEW and you know just the fact that whatever they have spent you know and he, and Tony Khan did admit that that if you take it from the very start of the company 4 years ago to today the company has spent more than it has taken in they um because they started with 100 million dollars in um you know basically 100 million dollars in seed money i guess is what you would call it and they have not made that 100 million dollars back but if they were to sell the company right now, um, you know, they're worth far, far more than that. So if you're looking at it as an, as an investment, it's already proven to be um, a great investment, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, like the idea that they're like, um, 
you know, he's some fan who doesn't know anything about business or whatever these people, you know, want to knock him for being. I mean, he's, he proved him, you know, that's been proven wrong. And, and I mean, again, who, who really, you know, most people thought that, that, that this, this thing wasn't going to last. And, um, you know, nobody certainly ever thought that they were going to do a show, the magnitude of this show. And I mean, look, it's not out of the water. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not, you know, I mean, I don't want to like overemphasize. This show is a unique one-time thing. I would be, you know, it's not like they're, they're duplicating this business in all these other markets. These other, you know, the other shows, they're doing fine. They're not doing as good as they were doing as far as house shows go, as they were doing one year ago today, but they're doing fine. You know, they're, they're doing all right, but it's, they're not knocking them dead. And they're certainly, you know, there was a period where, where they were beating WWE at the house shows. So there was a period where in fact, they were winning in many markets. Um, you know, they were winning in New York, they were winning in Chicago. That's not the case right now. Um, but, um, so, you know, I mean, that's the basic gist, but the, the company, I don't know, you know, it's just funny to, to, to see all these people who are so confident and so smart and turned out to be so wrong. You know, lots of people turned out to be so wrong on this one. So Ricky Starks comes out, comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had. His expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no what idea getting? what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.